Yo, 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 what it is, what it is, good ass. Oh, good evening, good evening to you. Sean Cornelius here, and you are watching After Dark with Sean Cornelius. And I hope you're, you're relaxed and settle down and kind of kick back, because you know how we do the show. I want to thank BronxNet for airing the show, and um, BronxNet.org for putting it on the internet. And you guys for just continuously watching the show and making it what it is. And I always have somebody fantastic and interesting on the show. And that's tonight is no different. Tonight it's a, a, a I don't know, it's a like sick. That's a new word I just made up, like sick. He's a comedian and uh, he's originally from down south. He's originally from down south. Uh, I'll let him tell you about himself. But he's in New York now and I met him at LOL's Comedy Club. And a uh, very, very funny guy, nice guy, and you guys are going to enjoy this interview. I'm pretty, pretty sure Chris Brown is with me tonight. But I want to thank you guys for tuning in every week on a Monday night at 1030 watching After Dark with Sean Canadian. And that's basically, that's basically all I got to say. You know, you know, I say it every week. Thank you so much. And we carry on. So tonight's guest, tonight's guest, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to bring some fire to the show. I don't want to put nothing underneath him. But I'm pretty sure he's going to bring something to the show. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy him. He's a very, very funny guy. And I met him at LOL Comedy Club in Manhattan. Yes, in Manhattan. You guys know where I work at So at sometimes. But uh, Chris Brown, very, very funny comedian, very laid back. You guys are going to enjoy getting to know this gentleman. So let's bring him to, uh, to our show right now and welcome Mr. Chris Brown. How are you, sir? What's going on, Sean? What, Everything what is doing? good, man. Everything is good. Are you, you all set up now? Yeah, yeah, I'm set up, man. I, I had to, I had to get my background right, you know, because you know, you can't be having no bad background these days. They're talking. Nah, about you. I couldn't. I couldn't let you come on the show and have a bad background, especially with all the folks that I've had on here that have, have lightened up and made their back. Some people. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Some people, you know, and kind of whatever. But, yeah, exactly. you know, some some people go extravagant. <laughs> I try to keep it basic, man. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's all good, man. Well, what I, I appreciate you, first of all, for, for sure. coming through and hanging yeah. out and, uh, you know, coming on the show. Yeah. And secondly, I'm, I'm obviously we're comedy comrades. And yeah. I, I, I met you this year. Mm -hmm. So this is how we do the show, man. Uh, you you yeah. tell the folks who you are, yeah. where you're from, what you hang out. And I'll ask the questions and we'll just rock and roll. So okay. Chris Brown, yeah. tell the people a little bit about yourself, okay. who you are, where you're from. Let them know yeah. what happened. Okay, well, you know, my name is Chris Brown. You know, uh, I know, you know, I got, I got, I share the same name as, as, as your boy, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, yes, you do, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a popular name. It's a lot of dudes named Chris Brown, so we all going through it, man. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. Been in New York about ten years. You know, started comedy ten years ago, uh, and uh, you know, just grinding, just trying to make progress in the game, enjoying it, just trying to cultivate and grow, you know, and, uh, you know, just enjoying sharing the stage with, with vets like yourself, Sean, you know, uh, right, right. You, you do your thing. You know I mean? <laughs> appreciate that. That's cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> That's it, man. You know what I mean? Just, just trying to, just trying to make it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you do a good job. Thank you so much for the, for the compliment. And yeah, I'm a vet, man. You 10 yeah. years. I remember 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost uh, 30 years now coming 30 years doing stand up. So, yeah, 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 yeah. um, but I remember that, that 10 year thing. So mm -hmm. let's, let's jump on. You said you're from down South. Yep. And you're here in the big app. How long have you been here in New York city? I've been in New York since 2012. I've been here since 10 years, you know? So, uh, okay. yeah, I would consider myself a New Yorker. I ain't lost my accent yet. People, people nah, said, yeah. they said, "Why you still talk like that?" Said, I'm a grown man. I can't change the way I talk at this point. Man. <laughs> it is what it is. You know? It is what it is. So you started doing comedy when? I started in 2012. Uh, I started probably about let me see, maybe about five or six months after I moved here. Though you know, I actually, you know, I, I started off acting, and uh, I was doing a little bit of acting, and I just slipped up on comedy. I never saw myself really being a stand-up comedian. You know, I always loved to laugh and I always was a was a silly guy and you know, just you know, always was cracking jokes, but I never saw myself actually trying to make people laugh on stage. You know, when I was in high school, we used to make fun of those dudes, the dudes that tried to be funny. Right. You know, so I always yeah. saw comedy as just like a stand up comedian. Oh, you trying to be funny. But uh yeah, I started like six months. I you know, I I met a pro comedian and uh he kind of inspired me to kind of get on stage for the first time. And uh, 
first time I got on stage, I was like, yeah, this 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 is what I what I want to do. So mm-hmm. falling, yeah, falling in love with stand up is a, a thing. I went to school for theater and stuff, and and okay. majored in all that kind of stuff, and got into comedy that way. Mm-hmm. But being a stand up comic, falling into it or loving it, mm-hmm. um, you can mention the guy if you want to. But but you've been said you've been doing it ten years. Ten uh-huh. years was around the time when I when uh, J. Anthony Brown, okay, George Wallace, those guys told me that I would. That's when you really find your yourself. After yeah, 10 years. did you find yourself yet uh, being in it for ten years now? Uh, I, I would say I'm starting to find myself. You know, I feel like I'm definitely more uh, farther along in, in the finding myself department now than I was like two, three years ago. Like I'm feeling more comfortable in uh, in, uh, in in what I want to say. I'm feeling okay. uh, you know sure of myself and what I want to talk about. And I'm pretty sure you know I'm, I'm starting to feel a lot more confident in, in what I feel as though is funny on stage. To the point where, like, you know, when I get on stage, you know, regardless of the response, you know, I, I, I'm not at the point where I'm second guessing myself and like, ah, oh, you know, am I still funny? I know I'm funny, but it's just more so about like, you know, what I'm gonna be funny about and really just liking what I'm doing on stage. You know, that's where I'm at right now. You know, right, right now I've seen your set. Mm-hmm. I've watched you. You, you, you. you saw a set recently, too. You remember that set? <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that recent yeah. set. That you well, well, listen, listen. We all, and I want to tell the audience, that it was a, we all bomb. We all bomb. We all fade. We ain't even 15 minutes in. You telling these people I'm bombing. That was long, but you, <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> sure they said after 10 years. You just be talking about some, yeah. Well, so we all bomb. <laughs> After ten years, they know that there's somewhere yeah, along the line. That's a part of the process. Yeah, yeah. That's a part of the process, and I, you know, we have bad shows. We won't call it a bomb. We call it a bad show. Hey, hey, <laughs> I took it on the chin. I, I was trying out some new material, and I appreciate you being honest with me because when I came off stage, first thing you said, it was kind of quiet in there, though. You know, they, they, <laughs> they was quiet. Now, I know you. They don't normally be quiet. Right, right. Because I know, I know your style, and your style yeah. is you have a you have a style where it's very. Mm-hmm. Very laid back, mm-hmm. very very calm, collected. You you, you deliver your punch lines, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was one of them shows, man. It was, and, and I've seen you quite a few times. So it. when I met you, since I met you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't look at it as anything on any kind of. Oh no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's cool. It's a part of the game, man. It was just funny. Uh, you know, you was you was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I host and you usually, you know, you bang them out. But you know, you listen. Not that I'm, I've, I've been doing thirty years. I told you so. I've it. seen a lot of it. I've seen it all. So it's nothing surprising to me. Like when you have those kind of shows, what did you do? What did you do after you finished talking to me? Did you really take it to heart or how do you how do you go about getting yourself? Well, I, definitely, I definitely don't take it to heart at this level. You know, that's a part of the game, man. You know, success is 90% failure. So, you know, and, you know, the bits I do got that 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 I like and that are working consistently, you know, they they had to go through that process. So uh no, nah, man, you know, at the end of the day, like I feel you know, I sometimes feel better when I try something new and it didn't work out as opposed to trying something old that I know worked out and it, and it went well. And I get, you know, it's right. the only way I feel like I'm growing, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a part it of the was, game. It was just one of them nights. It was one it of them shows. Yeah, that's all yeah, it, was. it was. Yeah. So, you know, I took it on the chin and, you know, the next night, you know, I, you know, I, I, I tried to redeem myself. You know, you can't be doing can't be bombing too much at no club. <laughs> nah, nah, you can't. No Not after 10 years, but you know, it, it happens, man. Oh, yeah, that's a part of the game. Yeah, it, yeah. it happens. So when you learn, you got, you, there's things you learn along along the yeah. way going. Yeah. Uh, um, you bomb, you have yeah. bad sets, you have yeah. great sets. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's how you do great jobs. So you do those yeah. things. Where have you, where have you traveled? Yeah. Uh, what is your most memorable uh, gig? Besides, gig. the gigs that, yeah, like the good gigs, the good, the good gigs. gigs. What, like, like, gigs. where I really went, did well. Yeah, where you where you went to? Oh, where, memorable, where, where, memorable, where, memorable can be not doing so well, you know. No, doing well. We already talked about not yeah, doing yeah, so yeah. well. Most <laughs> memorable gig. Uh, yeah. Well, recently, recently, I've been getting on the road doing hours. Well, you know, forty five to fifty five minutes. So uh, I would say right now, I just recently went to Maryland and did the revival. Uh, City Center, it's like a little small town in Salisbury, Maryland. So that was like my first real road gig, man. I, you know, I headlined. You know, I brought a host, I brought a feature. I did fifty five. I sold merch. So I, I think, you know, for me, that, that that's that's that would be the most memorable for me right now, though. 
because uh you know that i think I, I i i you know it was i really felt like a professional I sold tickets they paid me afterward you know uh they put me up in the room you know and uh even though that was my first hour you know it was cool you know it wasn't nothing to, i'm still structuring it and right. i'm still right. making it better but okay. for me to bang that time out and uh and you know for people to 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 to, to be pleased about it and you know people bought you know my little t-shirts or whatever i had selling and uh you know the venue was pleased and i would say that's my my most memorable and it wasn't so much about how well i did it was just more so about reaching a milestone you know of being right able right to get out of get out of this city get out of new york um, you know you know from a business perspective and a professional standpoint you know you sign a contract you know you bring your people you show up on time and you know just kind of getting to that point so i would say that's the most memorable for me at least right now that's where I'm at. No, that sounds good, man. That sounds good. And what is it that keeps you in the game? Like you've been now, you've been in ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I, I can remember those, that time. You know, what is it that uh, keeps you going? Like, okay, the next show, I'm, a, I'm gonna go ahead and I, I got to make it to this next. Oh, I know there are things that come at you, like mm -hmm. television and movies and things. Like I was in the theater stuff, so that's yeah. what, what kind of pushed me to do some things. Mm -hmm. What is it that pushes you to stay in the comedy game? I, I need it. You know, like, you know, a lot of guys want to do comedy. I need to do comedy. You know, I, I I need to talk about what's going on with me. You know, laughing has always been therapeutic for me. You know, uh, you know, I, my style of comedy is really about talking about, uh, you know, things that that really haunt me on the inside, you know, whether it's my insecurities, whether it's my fears or whatnot. So I need stand up comedy. I need to be writing material. I need to be getting it off my chest. I need to be laughing about it. So for me. Right. Uh, you know, what keeps as long as I'm living, you know, that's gonna keep me on stage, you know. So like, yeah, I go I go two, three days without being on stage, I start to feel antsy, you know. So like right. yeah, just as long as life hit me, you know, that's one of my favorite quotes right now is what don't kill me. What they say, what was it? What doesn't kill me, I can get stand up material out of so <laughs> that's so <laughs> yeah. that's different, sure. Yeah, yeah. So to me, I, I need it. So, you know, just as long as I'm living, going through life. I'm gonna be getting on stage, and, and I tell you another thing too. One of the most important, I, I like the comedy community, like guys like yourself. We a rare breed, man. You know, right. everybody ain't, ain't ain't built like us, and that's not you know taking shots at people that don't do comedy, but you know, we 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 special people. We, you know that that had this hunger and this 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 passion to be on stage and and, and to work out some material. So the comedy community too. You know, I love being yeah. around other stand up yeah. comedians. So that's that's what keeps me. Moving. And, Look. Let me ask you, man, because yeah. you, you have something that you already start, you can start off with, yeah. is your name. Yeah. You mentioned that earlier, you know, the Chris Brown thing. You yeah. know, and we all we all know that there's another legendary Chris Brown. Yeah. How how does that affect your comedy? How did, how have you have you twisted and turned that into something in your stand up? Uh well, you know, I sell merch. I, I sell some t shirts that say the other Chris Brown. You know, I think that's right. like a, it's just a little funny little spin. Uh, you know. A lot of people tell me, like, you know, I wonder whether I'm going to change my name or, I mean, I, I, I'm that's just who I am. You know, I'm older than, you know, Chris Brown, the singer. So, like, right, yeah, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, he got my name. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mess with you. But at the end of the day, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to rock with it until I can't, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, people crack jokes. They talk about it. I, 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 I try to address it when I first get on stage. But it's so old now, like it's it's just you know it's kind of hard to really, you know, I think you know now I just get on stage to talk about how I'm just so annoyed of it, you know. But uh, right, like, right, that happened. Hey, that happen. That's a yeah, twist. Yeah, but uh, now, uh, yeah, that's 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 you know I, I think sometimes you know uh, people think it's kind of cool, you know, like oh this dude named Chris Brown, let's go check him out. He, you know, he's you know he's in the entertainment. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, my last name is Brown. All us Browns have been talented. Maybe craziest, but you know, <laughs> I ain't never known a Brown that 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 what you know, Bobby Brown, James Brown, Chris Brown, all of, all of them get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a gift from Chris having that Brown last name. You know, you're, you're, the, you're the comedian, Chris Brown. That's about to make you. You got to make your mark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, know I mean? so, you got to make mark. That's cool, man. You know, again, <clears throat> you tap into things. You find out things about yourself. You use things. You use everything that you can use in making a situation happen yeah. on stage and people go with it. You know what I mean? You're a comedian. So you've been doing it 10 years. So yeah. your name is something special. I, uh, you've been doing it 10 years. Give me some, give me some of the downers, man. That's 
that's really been like, wow, I just didn't know this was this this industry or or this this career was going to bring me here. Said yeah. that you that you faced. Yeah. Well, well, one thing I will say, even though I've been doing it for ten years, I I, I haven't you know I haven't been consistent. You know, I think a lot of times I, I would say I've been consistent maybe the last four years, four or five years. When I first started, you know, uh, I was a little in and out. Uh, you know, it's you know once you know it, it you know once you first start stand up comedy, it's fun. You know, you trying it out. You, you know, and then life happens, and you know sometimes you got to focus on other things. And then on top of that, I think sometimes when you understand the business aspect of it, and and the fact that it's still a job, I think that sometimes can turn people away. So I think there was a point. In that 10 years where I just didn't really want to take it that serious. I just kind of wanted to keep it as like a hobby. And, you know, I would get on stage and I would take time off. And the downside of that is you get what you put into it. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys I started with, they surpassed me. You know, they're doing well. They're on TV. Much love and respect. And I'm all right with that because, you know, you get what you put into it. Right. right. But, uh, yeah, I think relationships, you know, I, you know, I was I was I was in a past relationship. I was married, you know divorced now so you know uh trying to balance that out with a relationship and a marriage at that time and you know i kind of had to step away uh so now i'm divorced and uh i'm even though i'm back in a relationship now and uh you know it's a different situation where you know uh she understands the lifestyle she's definitely a lot more open to it but uh yeah i mean it was a lot of ups and downs you know but i would say you know i just wanted to clarify in that 10 years though you know i did take some breaks but uh, I say one of the, I mean, just just really trying to trying to figure out, you know, uh, the funny, you know, there was a point in time where, you know, you're really starting to question your funny. Like, should I be doing this? You know, what am I talking about? You know, what direction am I going to go in? And I think right. once you stop trying to figure it out and you just focus on just being you and enjoying it and having fun on stage. And I think that's when, you know, everything starts to come together. So now, you know, I think that's the number one priority is just to, to remember to have fun. Well, that's what I found out about when 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 J. Anthony Brown and George Wallace and so they said that's what that 10 year thing was. Yeah. They said after about 10 years, you find out, you find yourself. Because yeah. you're still searching for yourself as you're doing this career and this thing called stand up comedy, you know. Yeah. And when you find yourself and you figure out yourself, it, it goes from relationships and it goes from your natural life. It goes from everything else. Yep. And you figure it out. You go right back to the 10 years. Yeah. Like I found out for myself, just be yourself. Yep. Just be who you are. Exactly. All the other years you're trying to be somebody else. You're yeah. trying to be this yeah. person. You're trying to see that person successful. That person yeah. made it off of that. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying it, but then yeah. you, you about 10 years ago, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to be myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there and be who I am and, yeah. and let people accept me for me. Exactly. That's when you pretty much can find out all those things. We're gonna get into that relationship thing yeah. in the second half. <clears throat> yeah. But you were married and you're divorced, so you yeah. have a you have an understanding on your, on the marriage thing and the relationship thing. Yeah. And you are in a relationship now. You said so. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. But give me some more about this this comedy game. Now you we met at the same club. Uh, now you're bouncing around. You're ten years in now, so you're on your your. Uh, you, let's say you found yourself, you know who you want to be yep. uh, and you're moving forward. What are some of the things that you're looking to do? Uh, because you said you started out acting. You were doing yeah. your acting. What are you looking to do for your, um, are you going to, you said you're going to stay in comedy, but are oh, you looking yeah, to do more yeah, acting yeah. roles? Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think, I think that's, 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 uh, that's something that I'm thinking about uh, transitioning into, uh, you know, the writing, the writing game. Uh I think at the end of the day, you know, when, when, when you really think about long term, you know, how to really make some money and create some wealth in the entertainment industry, I think you got to be behind the scenes. Whether it's, you know, you see a lot of actors, they, they go to directing and writing. And so, uh, yeah, I definitely think that uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to start transitioning into, into writing and uh, acting. Also, I was in a short film not too long ago by with, with a with a with a comedian that you know he's 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 pivoting into into directing and writing too uh but uh yeah definitely i want to write um I, I i would like to direct you know produce you know i think i got a knack for you know producing you know having ideas for stuff and uh yeah you know i mean because at the end of the day you know we, we got ideas that that we translate on stage but you know these ideas can be just as big 
you know, and they can, they can, they can, they can translate into films, TV series, documentaries, you know, so I definitely, you know, that's what I'm working on. Okay. So, that sounds like, that sounds like a winner. Now, what, what, now you're from the South mm-hmm. and uh, obviously you're up North now. You, yep. Obviously there's a major difference, but, but I think the South is picking up a lot of, of Northern ways, you know, yeah. um, the hustle and bustle of New York. You've been up there for a minute now. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer the South or you prefer the North work? I actually prefer, prefer the North, uh, you know, and I think it's more so because it's just new, you know, it's, it's something different. Uh, you know, I've been in, I've been in the South, you know, for most of my life. So, uh, you know, I like being up here, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's a grind and it's something about being, for me, at least it's something about being away from where you, where you grew up at, or where you come from. I feel like it, it, for me, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of makes me a little sharper. It, it helps me to go harder. And uh, okay. so I, I definitely prefer the North. And then I just like the convenience. Uh, I like the diversity. I mean, you know, I'm a Southerner at heart. You know, I'm always be who I am. I go home, you know, take care, you know, check on my family. Uh, but uh, yeah, I like the North. I think it's I think it's best for me to be up here though. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah I'm I'm the tri-state is gonna be my my base. You know? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know, I mean, and people always will ask me to ask people this question since you are you're doing stand up for ten years. Like, who are some of the stars or some of the famous people you work with uh, that mm-hmm. you're trying to get to their level? Obviously, we all get we all see somebody that we're trying to get to their yeah. level. Who have you worked with in your ten years? <clears throat> well, uh, I haven't done a whole lot, uh, but uh, let me see. I, I've opened up for you know uh, Roy Wood Jr. In Toronto at JFL, you know, okay. I got a good relationship with him. I've opened up for Keith Robinson at a uh, Stress okay. Factory in New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a, uh, I've done like some some small little segments. I did like one segment on the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Okay. That was with Roy, you know. Uh, right, right. But that's that's just about it, you know. Uh, I'm starting to get eyes on me right now, though, you know. Uh, but uh, you know, I got I got a few few guys that I got some relationships with, you know, that are definitely doing well. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just more, you know, instead of, I'm just trying to focus on me and, and, right. and keep better as I, you know, as I can get. And then, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever falls, you know, whatever happens, happens, you know. Uh, what's what's the big thing? What's your, what's your main focus? What's Chris Brown's focus? Where, what's the, what's the, uh, the epitome of, of this career, you know, what do you want to do? You want to do, obviously you want to do movies, but what's, right. what's, what's something that you're like, I'm going to do. That's the big thing is it, it could be winning an award, you know, whatever. What are you trying mm-hmm. to do? You know, it's, it, I'm starting to think about that right now. I, I think one of the, one of the, I think it's a couple of things. I think one of the things I, I would really like to do is, is, is shoot a, shoot a special, you know, uh, I think my first hour special, you know, okay. whether it's All self-produced right. or whether somebody else, I think that's going to be, uh, something that's going, that's definitely going to be something that I've always wanted to do. You know, uh, I already got an idea for, 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 for the theme and what I want to call it. So shooting a special is one. And I also would like to write something, you know, uh, you know, about my story. You know, I think, you know, uh, I have a unique background, you know, I've come in contact with a lot of people. So I, I think I got, you know, I have some, some stories that I would like to tell. So whether it's a, it's a feature film or TV series, I definitely want to write something. With 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 uh with with my perspective on the world and what you know you know what you know what's happened to me what I've seen and what I've come in contact with and uh, yeah definitely producing you know um, maybe producing other other projects but I would say TV series writing uh, uh, special those are things I want to do and then uh, ultimately producing production company and you know. Helping uh young guys, you know, chase their dreams, and you know, I, I just want to get to the point where I can give back. Right, I right. Mean, you can always give back. I'm, I'm giving back now, being of service, but really that I can, you know, push some careers forward. You know, that's that's when you know you're doing something. You know? Right. Do you see the Chris Brown show at some point? Chris Brown show. I think that might be problematic. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I definitely see a show. You know, uh, some. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works out. That's cool. Hey, hey, do me a favor, man, because I always ask this question. <clears throat> of a young comic or a young guy comic or female comic, let's let's start with the guy first. 
a young guy came up to you and said, could you give me a tip really quickly in about two minutes? Mm. So in about two minutes, give a young guy a tip on being a stand-up comic. Tip, man, uh, stay consistent, have fun. Yeah, stay consistent, have fun. Keep, you know, uh, 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 don't always think about yourself, you know. Uh, try to try to give back, you know, no matter, you know, what's going on. You know, you know uh, build genuine relationships too, though. You know, uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, we in this game, you know, people think about networking. You know, what I mean, I, I think, I think the focus should be building genuine relationships, maintaining those relationships across all, you know, no matter where they at. And I think if if you focus on that and you know just try to be decent, that's that's all you really you know stay consistent, uh, have fun, you know, build relationships, maintain relationships, give back. You know, I think. Those, those, those are like the four things that I just try to stand on, you know. And, uh, right now, we know these got to be. That those are very good points. Mm -hmm. But if a female came up to you, it's kind of different. Mm -hmm. They're a little different to me. It's a, it's a difference. What That's would a you tell point. a female if she said, "Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. I like to be a comedian. Could you give me a couple of pointers mm -hmm. on what I need to do to mm -hmm. be well? At least first of all, last ten years, and then go further." Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, first of all, I, I, I would, I would, I would be a little bit mind, uh, very mindful about what type of suggestions or uh, uh, advice I would give a woman comedian because I, I, I'm not a woman comedian, and you know, my experience has been totally different. So, you know, first of all, you know, I, I try to advise her. You know, you, know, you might want to holler at a woman comedian because you know your experience, you know, you know is going to be totally different than mine. But if I, from the outside looking in, if I had to give a, a, a woman comedian some some you know advice or you know I you know I, I try not to look at it even as advice I just like to share my experience and my strength and my hope but uh I would tell her the same thing have fun be of service uh basically the, you know the same things that I would tell another male comedian but if I had to tweak it a little bit because she would be a woman I would tell her to never compromise you know uh her values her principles and you know just you know stay true to who you are you know because i think you know women sometimes can fall victim to a lot of things out of here and, right, right. Uh, I, I would just tell her just to stay true to who you are and never feel as though you got to do something that you don't feel comfortable doing for you to make it because ain't no gatekeepers in my opinion if this is what you're supposed to be doing you're going you're going to do it so just stay true to that and you know you know it's a lot of dudes out here to take advantage of women you know what i mean so yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, the game is a game that's yeah, what it yeah. is you know, and we we both we have to do what we have to do. Yeah. Everybody, females and males, because there are a lot of women in power yeah. who uh, try to take or can take advantage of some men because men just yeah. want to yeah. be in a certain position or vice versa. Right. So lo yeah. those are good points to you know uh, for people to remember. And we're gonna take a break really quickly and come back and have some fun because you yeah, yeah, you're a little bit more serious than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you had a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so please tell them really quickly how to get in contact with you. They want to get in contact with you. Uh, okay, for sure. Well, you can find me at uh, Chris Brown Comedy on Instagram, uh, Chris Brown Comedy on Facebook. Uh, I got a YouTube. A lot of stuff is unlisted. I'm still cultivating, you know, my, 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 my stand up. But those are the two platforms you can find me. Uh, I think I'm at CBrown07103 at Twitter. But I'm really not on Twitter like that. But, uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook. And, uh, you know, you can also, I, I host a weekly show every Monday night on the Upper West Side, 109th of Amsterdam, the Sweet Lounge. You're more than welcome to come check me out. All uh, right. I, I, got a, I got a weekly show I've been doing for over a year where, you know, I, 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 I give, you know, it's a hang, you know, stage time. So it's a free show. Comedians of all levels, new guys, vets like yourself, pros, TV guys, you can always come through and check us out. It's free every Monday night. And uh, yeah, you can catch me at LOL, Grizzly Pear. Well, else? Every now and then I might, you might catch me at Caroline's, uh, West Side Comedy Club, you know, working on Stand Up New York, uh, Comics Roadhouse in Connecticut, in Atlanta. Sometimes you might catch me at the Laughing Skull. So, you know, and maybe I'll be in your town, maybe doing an hour. Yeah, you give me your you give me your whole schedule out, man. Hey, you know, you gotta make up for not having a whole lot of social uh, media. 
<laughs> good. Well, let me tell you something, Chris Brown. You're doing you're doing really well. Okay. Uh, so don't worry about it. Everything is cool. You're doing fine, man. Now we we want you to loosen up a little bit more because when we come back, yeah. We're going to talk about some relationship stuff. We're going to talk about okay. some love stuff. We're going to ask you some yeah. questions that you need to answer specifically and okay. get them out the way, and then yeah. you, can, yeah. you can relax. So go to the bathroom, wipe the sweat, whatever you need to do. To take your minute. I look like I need to go to the bathroom. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> go to the bathroom. You need to go to the bathroom. Check yourself out. <laughs> Thank you definitely for being here. So we're going right. to be right back with more Chris Brown on After Dark with Sean Kinnears. And uh, you guys stay right where you are and watch the commercials and enjoy the break. Whatever you know, you know how we do. All right, peace. We'll be right back. Hey, what up, y'all? Sandy Entertainer, just shouting out, sending big love, support to my twin. Y'all know he look just like me, my boy, comedian Sean Cornelius. It's Sean Cornelius. You know, but big up to you, Sean, on your Enough is Enough movement, doing your thing back there. Uh, you know, a lot of love, Charleston, South Carolina. you always been doing your thing. Big up to you, man. You're growing. Your voice is getting stronger. Your comedy is getting stronger. People loving it. So uh, keep doing your thing, all right? Yeah, and send me my T-shirt. That's right. Don't play. All right, big y'all. Big up, dog. i holla. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, this is, uh, this is comedian Gary Owen. And listen, I want to give a big, huge shout out to my fellow comedian and activist, Sean Cornelius, for his Enough is Enough movements to, to stop the violence and senseless killings that are going on. So I want you guys to support him and his movement like I do. So, uh, yeah, again, this is Gary Owen, and this is for my guy, Sean Cornelius. All right, thank y'all. Peace. No more madness, no more sadness. It's time to fix our world. It's time to start being responsible. It's time to put the guns down. It's time to stop the racism. It's time to be my brother and sister's keeper. It's time for real change. It's time for love to begin. It's time to stop selling drugs in our community. It's time to be a father to your sons and daughters. It's time to increase the peace. It's time to increase the love. It's time to stop domestic violence. It's time to practice safe sex. It's time to shelter the homeless. It's time to feed the hungry. It's time to stop killing each other. It's time. It's time. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is comedian Tony Tone, and you're watching After Dark with the host with the most, Sean Cornelius, my man. Sean Canadian's back here at the dark with Sean Canadian sitting in with the very funny uh, comedian, Mr. Chris Brown. You, you all right, brother? Yeah, I'm good. What's going on? <laughs> was it too long of a break? It looked like you were relaxed. Yeah, it was cool. Did what I needed, man. You know, <laughs> good to go. Chris Brown is sitting in the night telling us about his comedy career. Yeah. And uh, the first half was wonderful. I uh, hope you got some information from that. And Chris, we're going to move on to our section now. Uh, mm -hmm. th this is basically all about romance but i i need you to do me a favor could you please say abracadabra for me abracadabra okay oh oh there we are i feel i even feel it can you feel the difference can you feel just a little bit of difference just lie uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> a little difference you know what I mean? we're, we're in the love zone right now we're in the love okay. zone and uh these these questions that i ask you are relationship questions and about love you talked a little bit about your relationship, your first marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also married once and divorced, so I understand how that goes. But yeah. now we want to find out how you actually feel about these situations. Can we can we roll with it? Yeah, for sure, do. Yeah. All right, we're going to roll with it. All right. <clears throat> Here's the first question. The first question is, 
to Chris Brown. What is love? What is love? What is love? Mm, what is love? Uh, I guess love, man, is 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 whatever you make it. That depends on the person. You know, it can be positive, it can be negative. You know what I mean? It can. But for me, what love is is uh is 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 being patient, being understanding, caring, selfless, um, consistent. Uh, you know, I, I feel like love is a is is an action word. You know, people talk about wanting to be in love, but they don't want to do the work. You know, uh, so to me, love is 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 a job. It can be a job, you know, but it's you know, if you're with the right person, it's a job that you love, you know, a job that you cherish. But uh, you know, love is is uh is is, is something that you know, is extremely valuable. Something that you gotta cherish, and uh, you know, can 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 move you forward, and can set you back, you know. So uh, it's a blessing and a curse, you know what I mean? You know, like yeah. like in Love Jones, when that Love Jones come on you, it's a you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, well, make sure you remember these things too, because when your girlfriend asks you, yeah. you wanna you wanna have a good answer for her. So it's, she, it's, she uh, FaceTiming me now. She must have heard me talking. She, she was just like, I heard you talking about love. <laughs> yeah. talking about, you know, you talking about love to somebody other than me. She uh, me now. You know, whatever, uh, you know it. intuition is something. They women's intuition is a thing, brother. It's a real <laughs> thing. Love. All right, well look, let's make her feel good. Then tell me what is romance to you? What is romance? What is romance to Chris Brown? A romance, romance, okay, romance, what's romance? Well, romance is, uh, for me, I think romance is is, uh, is the fun part about, you know, of, of love. You know, that's the reward to love. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like okay. romance is, is what you get when you, when you, when you patient. Uh, when you uh, when you understand it whether you, when you you know that that's 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 the reward to what you for, for putting in the work when you love somebody is you get romance you get that feeling you get that you know dang i'm just happy you know you get that that, that great date night that ends perfect you know you know on a rainy night you snuggled up you know and uh you know so to me romance is is, is something you got to earn you know Okay. All right. I'll go with it. What is your, give me an example of a date, a short example of a date, because I got a part B to this question. What's a short, what's an answer? What is a date? A date? Oh, a date, date, yeah. A date is, is any time you spend with somebody that you into and they into you, you know, that could be anything from being at the crib, a walk, you know, a date don't have to, it don't, it don't, it don't have to be how much, it be about how much money you spending or where y'all going. To me, if, if if I'm into you, you into me, we on the same page, we spending time together, it's a date. So to me, it's just time. All right. Well, answering it that way, hmm. tell us your favorite date. And I don't want to get you in any trouble, but it may not be with the person that you're with now. Just a favorite date that you've had in your lifetime. Oh, okay. That's one that automatically you remember. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm smart enough to know to answer this question right. You know, you ain't going <laughs> to trick me in. You know what I mean? So my favorite date, is with the woman I'm currently with now. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, this is the first person I ever dated. You know what I mean? So like, we don't even go in the past. You know, I might talk about, but I would say one of my favorite dates uh, was actually the first date that I had with the woman I'm with now. Perfect date. Okay. Uh, we met up for tea and coffee. You know, I'm cost efficient. So I'm already loving this. The fact that I ain't, right. you know, I ain't spending a whole lot of money. She was down, <laughs> you know. She don't drink. I don't drink. We met up for tea at a coffee spot. Uh, we talked. They had like a little dart board. We played darts, you know. That right, get a little competition going. You know, I had to get behind her a little bit. You know what right. I mean? Kind of show her how to play. You know what I mean? Get a little touchy feely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, I felt out. You know, uh, and you know, the date was going well. We we grabbed some food down the street, and you know. Eight at a at a sports bar, casual. You know, she was cool. She she wasn't picky about what she wanted to eat. You know, some women, I'm vegan. I don't eat this. I don't eat this. You know what I mean? She was cool. She got some wings. You know what I mean? Uh, didn't didn't order a whole lot. You know, 
you know, did, you know what I mean? Kept it, you know, financially, you know what I mean? <laughs> After that, you know, I had a show. The date was going well. You know, I, I wasn't thinking it was going to go as well. And, you know, we, we, uh, she came to the show with me. I did well to the point, you know, it's the first time I was a little nervous, but I was just like, yo, I'm enjoying this date. I just need to do this spot. Why don't you come with me? Uh, so she, you know, enjoyed me on stage. And then, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a cigar fish, you know, I like cigars. So we, we smoked a cigar, rolled around the city and, you know, dropped it off. So to me, that was my favorite date. All right. Well, that very, you're, and you're also very smart. You're a smart man and <laughs> in, in picking your date with your, with your present. So oh, yeah. it's, all, it's all good. As far as I'm concerned, it's the first date I was ever on. There you go. That works. <laughs> it set me up. I know. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see how good you are with this one. Let's see how good you are with this one. <clears throat> you're walking down the street by yourself, smoking your cigar. Mm -hmm. You just happen to kick, you kick a bottle, you know, instead of picking up in the trash. Out comes a genie. Mm -hmm. it, this genie is me. Mm -hmm. I only got one wish because I'm just starting this gig. Mm -hmm. So I can only give you one wish and it has to involve love. What mm -hmm. is your one wish that involves love? Mm -hmm. My one wish that would involve love? Uh, let me see. That's a good question. That involves love. Uh, I think I would just, you know, the woman I'm with now, to, 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 if I could grant the wish that we that we, we, we we love and love on each other and stay in love till, till, till we Till we till we perish. That would be my wish. You know? you know, you got some very good answers, especially if she's watching or listening at this point. So you're ready because you're going to see the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's and they, 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 they seem very honest. So it's yeah, it's genuine. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, yeah. you know, I ain't like to be told honest. Yeah. All right. So what makes Chris Brown unique for love? Mm. What makes what makes him unique? And, and just answer that mm. in about a minute and a half or less. Mm. Yeah. I, well, you know, I don't consider myself unique. You know, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I, I think everybody is unique in their own way. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself more unique than, than the average person. You know what I mean? I think there's some things about me uh, that it might be, you know, a little, you know, a little, a little different. But, but, but I, you I, are because you're an individual. So on an yeah. individual tip, that's what I kind of mean. Like what yeah. makes you special, you know? Makes me special. So, um I, it's still only got a minute and a half. Okay, uh, I, I, I would think my honesty, you know, more than anything. I think, okay. you know, I think I can be honest. You know, uh, you know, I think I'm honest with myself. You know, I think I think that's something that I've always kind of had, even as a kid. You know, just being honest about how I feel, what's going on with me, and being able to, you know, to talk about certain things that maybe most people are not all that comfortable talking about. You know, as far as like, you know, my feelings. You know, uh, what bothers me. That's probably why I'm a comedian. But if I would say anything that makes me unique, I would just say, like, you know, my, I, 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 I get honest, man, you know, about what's going on with me, how I'm feeling. You know, if somebody, you know, stepped out of line, you know, I, I like to address the situation, men, women, you know what I mean? So, like, I would just say, if anything, my honesty. And then probably, you know, my, you know, I, I, I've been through some things. I've, I've got a unique background. Uh, just, you know, but if anything, I would probably just say my honesty, man. Okay. Man, you know, I yeah. think a lot of times, you know, I don't but mind. No, nah, nah, that works out fantastic. That works out well. All right. On a scale of one to ten, where would you rate your love? Now you can go past ten, but mm. for the for the show purposes, yeah. where would you rate it on one to ten, or wherever you would rate yourself? My love, as far as like my love in terms of what? physical love, um, okay. and let, let's say the whole package, the whole love package. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'm a ten. I'm a lover, man. Like you know, like I was, when I when I'm with somebody, I'm with them. You know, uh, no disrespect to any men out here though, but you know, I, I'm not really a dude that that be cheating. You know, once I'm once I'm with you, I'm with you. You know, I go hard in my relationships. You know, uh, I'm loyal. You know, what I mean, uh, I'm you know, I, I I just think yeah, when it comes to love, like I've always been a, a romantic. You know, now when I'm single, I ain't got nobody, and it is what it is, but. I say I'm a ten. You know, most of the time when I'm in relationships, I'm all in. Nah, man, you, you, you do what you do. Uh, you yeah. say what you say. Whatever you feel about yourself, yeah. ain't got nothing to do with nothing. No, nobody else. So yeah. a ten. That, that's cool. That's cool. Give me three things that attract you to a woman, Chris Brown. Three, three things that attract you to a woman. Three things that attract me to a woman. Uh, yeah. Physical, mentally, spirit, whatever. Whatever. Three things. Whatever. 
I say uh, three things that attract me to a woman. Uh, I, I think, you know, physical appearance, you know, uh, you know, attraction, you know. Uh, right. Uh-huh. You know, that's number one, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I would say uh, confidence. I like mm-hmm. confidence, you know. Uh, so I say physical attraction, uh-huh. confidence. And I would say uh, uh, a sense of humor too, though. I like I like the laugh, so I would say right. physical attraction, confidence, sense of humor. Those, those my those my top three. That's cool. That works out. What are three things that are unattractive to you? Three things unattractive that, to me. That's turn what, you off. That turn me off. Uh, man, that's a good question. Um, uh, I would say a woman that's 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 uh, it's not polite. That's rude, mean. You know, not friendly. I don't. I can't get into a woman that's you know just just that's like a turn off. If you rude to people, you rude to me. You cussing me out, you know. That I can't. I'm not okay. with you. All uh, right, that's number one. That's number one. Uh, so what's another turn off? Uh, dishonesty. If you if you dishonest, you know. If, if, okay. if I can tell right. off the back that you kind of like you know, you're not really honest. You know, that's that's a big turn off. I can't, you know, I can't deal with you in that. And I would say another turn off is uh um uh, you know, a woman that don't really doesn't have a good relationship with her family. <laughs> you know, because okay. essentially a relationship is gonna turn into family. So how you deal with your family now, it tells me a lot about, you know, how you know we would interact, you know, in, in a, you know, as a unit. So to me, sure. I, you know, it, 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 that's a turn off. You know, I understand people fall out with their family, but if you if you just seem like you don't you don't really you know deal with your family, you got issues with your family. You know, I, I think that's a turn off. Okay, well that's good. I'm glad you answered it that way. Let's let's go to this question and find out what you think about this. Mm-hmm. You have respect, mm-hmm. honesty, mm-hmm. and trust. Mm-hmm. You have to get rid of one of them for this show. Mm-hmm. Respect, honesty, and trust. Mm-hmm. Which one are you getting rid of, and why? Uh, well, to me, they all three of them go together. So if I got to get rid of one of them, I got to get rid of all three of them. You know what I mean? I can't. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's like so. Like I mean, respect, honesty, and trust. Like you know, if, if I get rid of one of them, then the other two don't don't mean nothing. So to me, like you know, I hope I ain't mess up the question. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mess with my question that is whoever's watching hopefully a girl ain't watching whatever it works in, because that's the first you. time I don't give me respect but you honest you know what I mean it, 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 you trust well, me it's like, you don't trust me it's, it's, I don't I've know I've never never on this show had that answer honestly and I would tell you the truth nobody's <laughs> you know, ever thrown out all of them they, they, they worked really hard and got rid of one but so you throw out a relationship yeah, no, I can't. I gotta have all three. <laughs> all right, that, that, look, look, that works. Yeah. That works. That's fine. Yeah. Um, tell me five lovely things about life, man. Five, five lovely, lovely things about life. Lovely things just, about life that you just enjoy about life. Yeah. Uh, I, I I enjoy the ups and the downs. You know, you know, uh, I, you know. I was just talking to somebody about that, man. You know, when things are not going good, you know, uh. I think, you know, you got to enjoy that too, though, you know, because, you know, that's how you appreciate when things are going well, you know. Like, you know I, I like rainy days just as much as I like sunny days. You know, rainy days, I'm inside. I get to cultivate. I get to think. So I think, you know, that's the lovely thing about life, the ups and downs, because that makes it fun. You know, if, if it was all up or if it was all down, it wouldn't be, you know. So I think I like that. Uh, relationships and people. You know, I had a mentor when I was young. He told me, man, you know, people are God's greatest gift. So to me, you know, people. Okay. You know, the human interaction is is, is another lovely thing about life. Uh, let me see what I said. Ups and downs. People. How many How many things I need? You need three more. Uh, three more? Yeah. Dang, you know I mean? That's five. That would make five. The, uh, ups and downs. People. Uh. Lovely things about life, uh, food. You know, I like to eat. You know, that's a lovely thing. You know, yeah, yeah. I love eating. Uh, what else? A lovely thing about life, uh, romance. 
you know, romance is at the core of the family unit, you know, so like, you know, romance, love, you know, so like that's you know, what I'm at for. <laughs> uh, let me see. Lovely thing about life, laughter, you know, so to me, that's another thing, too, you know, so laughter is probably, you know, the best way to sum them all up because, you know, that's how we, you know, that's right. You know. All right. Um, how long? Mm-hmm. Or how short, mm-hmm. if you can go back and remember. Was it, let's, let's let's figure it. Let's let's, let's case it. Let's ask it this way: How long before mm-hmm. you told someone you love them? And how it long? Could be, it could be how short. It could be a short period of time, a long period of time, or someone affected you that much that you told uh, them you loved them quickly, or it took a long time. Uh, no, I, I say my relationship now. I, I told her I loved her pretty quick. You know, once again, I don't remember anything in the past. Uh, so, <laughs> but no, I think this was the quickest time I told. It's quickest that I've told anybody I loved them was um. Uh, okay. It was. It was probably. Yeah, we were speedballing. Might have been a month or two. You know I mean? Might have been a month or two. Okay. Oh, well, that's right. That's the time frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. about a month. Or two, yeah, but we spent a lot of time. You know, we was we was around each other almost every day. So. Right, and that that makes a difference. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. That makes a difference. All right. Uh, let's see. What would you rather have, love or money? What would you rather have right now, love or money? Oh, uh, you got to pick one, just one. I'm, I'm, I'm a guy. Pick one. I would definitely want love over money, though. Yeah, that's that's easy. Any any particular reason why you would say love? With love, you can get some money. You know, which I don't know. If you, I don't know if you can get no 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 love with. Uh, I mean, with love, I think you can get money with love. I don't think you can. Uh, did, I, did I say it right? I think I think you can get money if you got love. Yeah. But with money, I don't think you can get love. Is that it's right? a funky question. It's yeah, a funky yeah. Question. I, I, think, I think if you already have love, you can get money. Yeah. I think it's hard to find love if you with money. You know what I mean? I don't know. I might, I might be mixing it up. I, I hear what you say. I hear what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a, cause it's a real love thing. Yeah, so yeah. If you, if you have if you have love already, and then you get money, you, you can find a way to make some money. Yeah, if you, if money, you have you, money, you, you get a love, but you don't know if it's real. Love, love. yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I take love. No, nah, it's a good way. It's a good way for you to answer the questions, man. It's a good way for you to answer the question. It was a tricky question, so yeah. so basically, uh, yeah. that's how we go. That's how we do things. But <clears throat> I want you to stay focused because this is the last segment of the show. The show has been so fun. Okay. It's going by just like that, but we are going to go into uh, this phase right now. Okay. Chris Brown's favorites. Okay. And these can be one word answers, mm-hmm. and you don't have to explain unless I really ask because, you know, it is what it is. These are your favorites. So people can get to know you mm-hmm. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. You sure? Yep. All right, here we go. Chris Brown's favorite food. Favorite food. Favorite food. I think uh, I think I would like to go with a uh, steak. <laughs> got, a lot, got a lot of them, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I like a nice steak. Steak. Mm-hmm. Okay, steak is cool. Yeah, Chris steak. Brown's favorite book. Favorite book. Yeah. The Alchemist. Okay. Any particular reason why? Uh, it, I think it's just it's it's it kind of that was right like one of the one of the one of the first books that I that I read when I moved to New York. Okay. It kind of resonated with my journey. And, you know, it's just a book about, you know, following your intuition and just kind of like, you know, having this this passion for something and going after it. And then, you know, just how everything will fall into place if you just you know, take that risk. So I would say The Alchemist. I think that's the name of the book. I got you. Uh, Chris Brown, your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Yeah. Mm. Favorite movie? I got so many. I think I might have to say Training Day. <laughs> Training Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I love Training Day, man. That's that's, okay. movie. that's a good movie. That's the one Denzel won his uh, Academy yeah, Award yeah, for. Yeah, you know, right. Left the romantic and went straight to some violence. Yeah, yeah. He jumped and went. So, <laughs> no, not a problem. Yeah. Your favorite flower? If you had a flower, what was your? What's your favorite flower? Favorite flower? I'm not too familiar yeah. with flower, but if I had to go with a flower, I would say probably a rose. You know what I mean? I, I'm generic, I guess, man. Mm-hmm. That works out. Rose yeah. is cool. Yeah. <clears throat> What's Chris Brown's favorite 
drink, whether it's alcohol or non-alcoholic? Well, I don't drink, but my favorite drink that's easy is ginger beer. I'm a ginger beer dude. Ginger beer. A little yeah. healthier, it's supposed to be healthy as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with you. I got ginger beer right here on the table right now, too. <laughs> okay, all right, that works. Let's see. Uh, Chris Brown's favorite black TV show. Oh, man, that's Martin all day. Martin all day. Okay, Chris Brown's favorite TV show, period. Favorite TV show, period. Well, if it, yeah, unless it's unless it's Martin, it could be Martin as well. well now, I would say favorite TV show period right now. I would say this this TV show called "I'm Dying Up Here" on Showtime. Okay, yeah, it's about comedians in the in, in the seventies and the eighties in the LA. Ah, so. okay, I, I saw that. All right, yeah. I saw that on the schedule. Yeah, uh huh. All right, well, we got. A, let me see how much time we got. A little bit of time. Let me give you one more. Your your favorite. Uh, your favorite state? Uh, I think I would go with that ribeye, boneless. Well, no, bone in. Ribeye. No, no, state, state, S A T. -E. Oh, favorite state? I thought you said yeah. state. Nah, state. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Talking about state. food. Favorite state? Yeah. Uh, favorite state? I would say uh, favorite state. It's funny you said state. Yeah. -E. Yeah. Yeah, because you know you hit a state, and you you know you might like the couple of cities, but you might not like the whole state. I, I say I probably go with uh. I like California. Okay. All right. It might well, not. I guess that's just something that's, you know, I, I'm kind of like fascinated with Cali right now, you know, San Fran, LA. All right. Your last one, and you can answer this one. It's, it's, it's an easy one to me. Your favorite sexual position? Ah, man. You get, you get X rated. That's it. That's it. Well, <laughs> your you, last one. You wait towards the end. We're running out of time. <laughs> so I'm yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Damn, man. Favorite sexual <laughs> position. That's it. Oh. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know, man. I, uh, that's kind of throw it out there. Oh man, I, I'm, I'm I'm old fashioned, man. Just, just give me missionary, man. I ain't trying to be telling I'm a business man. <laughs> Chris Brown, you're off the love seat, man. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Appreciate you coming through, answering the questions, being very honest, and doing your you, thing. Man. You don't know how to close the set. <laughs> <laughs> boy, I tell you, boy. Uh, and you. that's it. That's how we do it, brother. <laughs> All right. That's how we do it, man. Well, thank you. Come on back anytime. All right. I appreciate it. Oh, man. Much love. Hang out. Don't go anywhere. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to After right. Dark with Sean Kinesis and, and comedian Chris Brown. We okay. appreciate you and we love you. And uh, please, as my, my parents always say, God, and I know they're watching over me, please go with God in your heart. Have a peace of mind. Have a wonderful, wonderful tomorrow. Catch us back here again on BronxNet After Dark with Sean Kinesis. God bless you. Good night. Chris Brown, appreciate you, man. Talk to you. Thank you.